What's going on everybody and welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. My name is Chris. I'm going to be your host for today and today we have the highly sought after Weller CYPB which stands for Craft Your Perfect Bourbon and we're going to talk about that during this week's my thoughts on what I've been thinking but let's pour this up. Let's put it through the gauntlet price taste drinkability. I got to tell you I'm excited to try this one but at the same time I'm high hopes for it which means it's probably going to let me down like a lot of bourbons that I've tried this year that I've been hunting to, for for way too long. But let's get into this. You know the rules. Everybody knows before we get started. Time for the traditional sip. Cheers, y'all. Okay, maybe not. So first, let's talk about the things we know about this. This is the Weller lineup. We're talking about Buffalo Trace. We're talking about the weeded bourbon. This is coming in at 95 proof. I believe they say online that this is eight years old. I don't think, is there an age statement anywhere on this? I don't think that there is an age statement, but I believe online that it did say that it was eight years old. I don't know if that's every release since the initial one, but this one does not give me an age statement anywhere on it. We're going to assume at least eight years old when it comes to this, but we're also going to talk about this craft your perfect bourbon story and you guys can let me know what you think in the comment section below but let's get to it price taste drinkability how well does this sit for a 95 proofer I mean, here's the deal. I literally just drank a bourbon that was 107 proof, and I told myself 107 seems right in that realm of right where I can start guessing what proof it is, right? Maybe I say it's 105, maybe I say it's 110, but I'm at least within a few proof points. When it gets to 95 proof, I couldn't tell you if this thing was 80 proof or 105 proof. I feel like it's just kind of hard to tell when it's this low of proof when you're drinking higher proofs all the time, it like throws off my my scale of what it's supposed to taste like at this proof. It's not harsh by any means, but like, is it too harsh for 95 proof? I really can't tell. I'm gonna take one more sip. I'm gonna really like open myself up as far as like the, uh, the nasal cavity and stuff to see if this gives me any real ethanol burn. I almost wanna take a shot at this proof. You know what I mean? I just want, cheers. See, there's a little bit of a burn. Yeah, see, that gave me a little bit of a burn. It gave me a warm feeling all the way down. It hit the back of the throat there and kind of hurt just a little bit. I think this is all of the 95 proof that it's talking about. We give it a 7.0 if it drinks right at its proof. I'm probably going to put it right around a 7.0. Again, it's nothing crazy. Even if it drank slightly under its proof, there's no way I'm putting this under like 93, 94 proof. So we're right there. So let's just go a straight 7.0 and say this drinks like a 95 proof. Nothing wrong with that. It's just not drinking like an 80 proof. And it's not 120 proof drinking like 100 proof. So a nine point, sorry, 7.0 is where we're going to put it when it comes to drinkability. I mean, I will say it just seems like a traditional, it seems like Weller Special Reserve, like kind of on steroids. It's definitely better than that. I am going to do a video and the reason that I wanted to open this and I wanted to get this on our list is because I am going to do a video. I have Weller Antique 107. I have the Weller Foolproof. I have a Weller Special Reserve. I have the CYPB and I also have the Weller Single Barrel. We're going to put them all up against each other because I feel like Weller Antique 107 is like my go-to easy to find from the Weller lineup. But then I think that foolproof is definitely my favorite, but it's going to be interesting to see all of these side by side. Obviously the proof points are going to be a little bit different, but we're going to do it blind. We're going to see which one we like the best. So I wanted to get this open. I wanted to get this on our list. I will say taste wise, and that's what we're going off of when we do the blind with all five of those. I don't care about proof or availability or anything like that. Taste wise, I think this is solid. I think it's a very easy, smooth sipping whiskey, but I will say a little bit overhyped, right? I'm not like, I w I'm not going to go out and hunt for another one of these. I'm not going to overpay for another one of these. I'm glad I have it. I'm glad it's in my collection because of what it is, because of the name behind it. But that's all I'm really excited about on this. A very, e I think there's plenty of other whiskey that tastes just as good, if not better than this. That's at the same price point that you can find on your shelf every day. That's what I'll say about this. Still very good. Taste-wise, a 7.0 if it's an average tasting whiskey, I think it's above average. I think it's quite above average when it comes to the taste. It's my particular flavor profile that I enjoy, so I'm going to give this a pretty good score when it comes to taste. I don't think it's quite exceptional, so we're going to go like right in the middle. I'm going to go right below an 8, actually. I don't. I mean, it's good. It's good. It's a good tasting whiskey. 
Doesn't live up to the hype, but for the price point that we're going to talk about in a minute, I don't think it's supposed to. So I think it's a good tasting whiskey that people should try to get for MSRP, and that's about it. Otherwise, don't overpay for this thing. I'm going to give it like a 7.96 when it comes to taste on this. I don't think it quite deserves an 8. It's good. It's really good, but 7.96 is where we're going to put it. And last but not least on this bottle, we're going to get into price. And this bottle is $50. People, the thing is, I think this is, I don't know about today. I haven't looked at this in a very long time. I think these are still, they're pro, I would say $450 today. But I think they used to be like $500, $550. And I don't get that at all. Listen, there are some bottles that I've truly, truly loved, and I understand they cost $200, so the secondary market is $500, or they cost $150, but they're GTS, or they're, they're that BTAC lineup. I just cannot, I can't imagine a, a, a day in this world that I would spend $450. Again, great glass of whiskey, very, very good glass of whiskey. I, I just don't understand that. I need people... I'm not going to tell people what to do with their money, but I, what I will tell people is I need you to stop overpaying even on the secondary market for average bottles of whiskey. If you're overpaying for great bottles of whiskey, if you're trying to finish your collection and you have every GTS except 2020, then okay, you got the funds, go buy it. That's not going to bother me. I don't know if I'm calling out specific people here. If you're paying $550 for this particular bottle of whiskey, you're an idiot. Just quite frankly, you're an idiot. That's the only way that I can put it. I've had it. It's $50. I might pay $70 for it. Actually, I would probably pay $100 for it just so I could sell it to you at $550 if that's what this is going for today. Again, I would probably say it. the market's been dipping. Maybe it's like $400, $450 these days. Anything over $100, I don't think you should buy this bottle personally go try it first and again if maybe you're just a collector you're like the people that like to store stuff in their basement and you have 12 of these and your lucky numbers start i don't know what the instance would be where i would pay 550 dollars for this but there's no way on god's green earth that i would pay that amount of money for this that being said 50 dollars is a fantastic price point for this eight year uh, buffalo trace weeded i mean i'm not too mad about it i'm a little bit mad about the cypb which we're going to talk about in a minute but for this particular release at 50 bucks, what are we talking about? That seems fantastic. 95 proof, nothing overwhelming when it comes to the taste, nothing overwhelming when it comes to the drinkability. An average uh, an average price these days is 75 to $90 for a, for a bottle of whiskey. So we're going to go above average when it comes to price. I'm going to say 8.57 when it comes to the price on this. It's It's a fantastic price for this particular bottle of whiskey. Listen, here's what I'll say. If the distillery is telling you that you should pay $50 for this and you think, you know what? I should pay $550 for this, then you're doing something wrong. That's the only thing that I can say. That being said, let's talk about my thoughts on what I've been thinking with this particular release, including the CYPB. Let's get to it. Here's the deal, and I'm going to be blunt. Buffalo Trace did not give a bleep about anything that anybody put in any survey to get this particular release out. So this is how this release apparently worked. A couple of years ago, I don't know how many years ago now since CYPB has been out, but a couple of years before the release, they asked people, whether online or in-house at the distillery, what would you craft your, your perfect bourbon as? Craft your perfect bourbon. What would it be? And they asked questions. What would your mash bill be? What would your age statement be? What would your proof be? And you're telling me, as a community, they reached out to the people and they said, we want a 95 proof weeded Buffalo Trace product. That's what they said. After years of trying GTS, after years of chasing Stag Juniors at these 120, 130 proofs, you're telling me, they said, you know what, Buffalo Trace? You know what we're really looking for? I know you got Weller Antique 107 out there. I know you got Weller Special Reserve out there. We don't want any of that. We want a 95 proof weeded whiskey. No. The heck was that? I don't know what that was, but that scared the crap out of me. I got to tell you, that can't. what happened was Buffalo Trey said, hey, we want to put out another Weller product to get some more money so that we can add to this Weller lineup. We're going to put out this fake survey, and then we're going to say that the results came in and told you that you wanted a 95-proof Weller CYPB, and we're going to call it Craft Your Own Bourbon. So everybody that participated, the thousands of people that participated now are like, hey, I was in on that. I asked for a weeded bourbon. I asked for this particular proof. Eight years on, on the top floor of some warehouse that they're talking. It's just a low, it's the biggest marketing scheme I've ever seen when it comes to whiskey, and I've seen a lot of them. This one right here, good whiskey, 
Do not get me wrong. The story, though, I mean, do they really think we're that stupid? Do they really think we're that stupid? And maybe that's just the shots talking, but that's my rant. That's my CYPB rant. Let me know if you think this is actually like a real introduction of what people wanted or if this is just something that they did as a marketing ploy to sell more bottles. Cheers, y'all. 7.84 is where this particular bottle is going to fall. And I got to tell you at $50, I think price saved this. Again, I think it's a very good tasting whiskey. I think it's pretty good when it comes to a 95 proof, when it comes to drinkability. If you're looking for something that's a little bit easier to drink out of the Weller lineup and you don't want to go foolproof, which you probably can't find either, or Weller Antique 107, which is the one that I would recommend to you. I will say this seems like a very good substitute if you can find it, not at $550. That being said, everything else is hype. Everything else around this particular release is hype. I got to tell you, that's just how I feel about it. I don't like the CYPB story. It seems a little bit far-fetched to me. I do not like everything when it comes to the secondary market on this. So that's where we're going to leave you. Great bottle at $50. Not a good bottle at anything over than that. And that's my story for today. But listen, if you learned anything today, make sure you click that like and subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. We're pushing 10,000 here on YouTube, which is absolutely crazy. Check us out on Instagram at Bourbon of the Week. Go click that follow button over there. Our Patreon and our Discord, both those links in the description below. Come chat with us 24 seven. Patreon, as little as $3 a month. That's how I get my hands on bottles like these. And we do bottle splits. We do all kinds of fun things on the Patreon. So make sure you check that out. Please don't drink and drive. Always drink responsibly. Stay healthy, stay happy, and stay paying the right prices for bottles. Make sure you check out my reviews if you want to know what those are. Cheers, y'all. Crafty and perfect bird of my ass.